So in the last video, we were introduced to a young man named Steve, who's currently working as a social security and Canada revenue scammer in India. And he's working for some powerful and corrupt people and making a very meager income. And he says that he's tired of ruining people's lives and he's desperate for a way out. And so he's been working undercover with a private investigator named Devin in Canada to warn people who are about to send all their money overseas. And up until now, they've saved dozens of people out of hundreds of thousands of dollars. And so to help us understand how this all began, Steve asked me to reach out to this mysterious Devin and have him vouch for Steve and fill in all the cracks of the story. And I did. And I'm going to share with you what I learned. We met in November of uh, 2018. Um, by that time, I was receiving, much like everyone else, countless phone calls, irritating Revenue Canada scammers. Um, I then saw a news article on the television that talked about what kind of money this program was generating and, and the number of people that were affected. Uh, I, I realized that this was a serious problem, that it didn't look like uh, it was going to go away anytime soon. So I just started to think about ways that I could get involved in somehow help prevent or stop or have some sort of effect on how this was going. So as Devin watched the news and saw countless people losing thousands of dollars, he started to think that maybe he could do something about it. And he noticed that the scammers were robocalling hundreds of people a day and if they couldn't get someone to pick up the phone, they'd leave a scary voicemail and try to get the people to call them back. There is a lawsuit that's filing against you from Canada Revenue Agency and Warren has been issued. So Devin thought that if he could shut down these numbers before the victims had a chance to call back, he could potentially save them from losing their money. If I could get my hands on those phone numbers, uh, we have um, an automated system that we can call those numbers automatically, kind of reverse uh, scamming them sort of thing. And uh, we could set it up that our system could call those numbers um, very frequently to a point that it may very well disrupt their service. We could literally tie up every incoming line that they had. So Devin set up a website and he encouraged people who had received these mysterious calls to submit the numbers to him. Then Devin would use his automated system to scam the scammers by calling them 20 times a second, overloading their phones and eventually requiring them to shut down the line. You know, I really wanted to see how this system worked. So I asked Devin to throw my number in the machine and show me what would happen. This is an important announcement from Mary from ILO. Mary had a little lamb whose fleece was white as snow. And everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. And I'm getting another call. Her Hello? I like big butts and I cannot lie, you other brothers can't deny that. When a girl walks in with an itty bitty waist and a round thing in your face, you get sprung. Shut up. The teacher did reply, go f yourself. Now, when people submit a number to the website, the machine just doesn't kick in automatically. Devin and his team have to determine if the number is in fact a scam number. So Devin had to investigate each number to see which ones were scams and which ones were legit. And during one of his investigations, he ended up meeting a friend. So I called one of the numbers that was submitted on the website, and uh, a gentleman answered the phone. Good afternoon, Canada Revenue Agency. This is Officer John Bradley. How can I help you? Uh, yes, I received a phone call uh, regarding something about a tax matter and uh, something about going to jail. And um, we talked for a little bit about uh, what was the purpose of uh, their call to me. And uh, he, ex he he just seemed very intelligent. He also seemed very um, knowledgeable uh, and comfortable in this process. Can I have your name so that I can bring up your file and uh, so that I can tell you more about the case? It's, it's uh, Chris Kringle. And can you confirm your address for me, Mr. Kringle? But yeah, it's uh, 100 North Pole Way. And that's uh, in the North Pole. And the postal code is H0H0H0. Oh, yeah. Okay, Mr. Kringle, I have your file in front of me. Just give me a moment while I review your file. Do you know 
Dasher, Dancer, Brancer, and Vixen. That kind of intrigued me, and I continued to talk with him, and I kept him on the phone probably for about a good 15 or 20 minutes. Um, and then he started to open up about uh, his job and, and what it was like to live where he was at, and, and he seemed to be very forthcoming and very, um, very honest and genuine in, in his replies. Hey, let me ask you an honest question. I mean, you seem like a really nice guy. Why? Uh, what got you caught up in all of this? I do it to feed my family. I admit it's not the greatest job in the world. Um, I really wish I could do something better. But there is not a lot of work in this part of the world, you know. So that took the conversation in a different direction about, you know, what was motivating him to do what he was doing and, you know, what were his real interests in, you know, going forward and his future and, and, and all of that. He told me a story that he was recently involved in a scam where it was identified that someone had about fifty-five or sixty thousand um, dollars cash that they had access to, uh, and this gentleman appeared to be very distraught about something that was going on in his life. Um, but this was yet another thing that was um, he had to deal with, and, and he didn't. He didn't remember quite all of the details, but he just remembered that uh, this is going to be a huge win for him uh, if he can get this guy to uh, turn over that, that cash. And uh, over the series, I believe, of two days, um, they in fact did get this guy to put this money into a, a Bitcoin machine, um, never to be seen again. And he said that uh, he would wake up in the night uh, with sweats and he would wake up, you know, literally shaking um, nightmares that what he had done to this man and that he feared for this guy's, uh, he feared for this guy's life um, in terms of what would happen once he found out that it was all a scam and that he was taken advantage of. So that was pretty shattering for him uh, and it was, I think it was, a, I think it was the real eye opener or awakening for him. And uh, I told him that I would try to help him out in any way that I could. He was very skeptical and he said that he's heard it before, it's never ever happened. And I just said, well, you know, to show you that I'm sincere here, I'll just send you a hundred dollars. Will that convince you that I'm, I'm sincere in what I'm saying to you? And he said, well, yeah, sure. So he gave me some information as to where I could send a hundred dollars through Western Union. Uh, but again, he was very skeptical, and then uh, we just ended the call, and that really was, you know, kind of the end of it sort of thing. I didn't expect to ever hear from him. So the very next day, I got a, a message on WhatsApp, uh, and this gentleman uh, just uh, was very appreciative uh, for the money, and said that if there's anything that he can do for me to just ask. So over the next day or so, I started to think about that and I thought, well, if I could ask, I would ask him to see if there's any way that he could perhaps maybe leak or get me some phone numbers or a list or, or do something that would allow me to intervene as they're attempting to scam victims um, in the United States or Canada or anywhere for that matter. So I, I began a dialogue with him on WhatsApp and uh, we talked about the possibility of him doing this and uh, he was he was more than more than ready to, to to get involved and started to give me phone numbers he would very secretly uh, have access to his phone and uh, he would whisper into the phone sometimes very faint and i would amplify the uh, the voice message in order to hear the number ring this number now it's two eight nine nine eight four five seven one eight He's right now on the call. Yep, he's about to put 7K into the machine, so help him. Bye. Sure enough, the individual was on the phone and in the process of uh, following the directions given to them to go and either use a Bitcoin machine or purchase gift cards um, or do uh, money transfers. Uh, there was a variety of methods to which they would request the, the money. So it was quite elaborate. So when then I injected myself in the process to try to thwart their attempts, uh, people were 
very skeptical that I was in fact legitimate and not part of the whole scam making process. A lot of people just simply hung up. Hello. Hey, I'm a uh, criminal investigator. I believe you may be subject to a telephone scam. Hey, hey guys, f you guys. Fucking uh, you, man. Fucking I gonna kill you if I catch you. Okay, listen to me. But, uh, I continued to be relentless and uh, just simply call them back, send them text messages. Um, you know, do everything I could to get through to them to make them aware that they're being scammed. Hello? Sir, I will try one more time. You are talking Don't to the authorities. I'm trying to help you here. We got a, a, a message from our informant in India that you were on the phone with a phone scammer. We were calling you to try to stop you before you lost your money. Guys, I, I, am, I am already walking around some people uh, Pushing me in one store, in another store, then take cash and go to buy stream. We gonna don't do any of that. Did you do any of that? Don't do any of it. It's a scam. They're stealing money from you. Don't give any money away. Because I'm already, I'm already off two hours. You know, they send me there, or they also say I am police. You know, and I am this. It's all bullshit. They're, they're, they're con artists. They're thieves. Quite a few already identified that it was a scam and knew it was a scam, um, but the majority uh, were simply, you know, blown away by the fact that they were just about to be taken for, you know, somewhere as little as $500, um, and then somewhere as high as $100,000. It's the numbers are so incredible. It's hard to believe that that someone would, um, you know, take that kind of money and, and feed it into a, a machine. But in fact, it's happening. You know, as, as we come to recognize and realize that, you know, the lives that are being affected, this is not, you know, this is not a, a simple too bad on you. you, you know, you lost, you lost your money or you lost your savings. I mean, these are life altering events. These, these can cause uh, thoughts of suicide, um, depression, anxiety. These can have devastating fa um, effects, not only on the individual, but certainly on the family um, when they find out uh, that this money has been, has been stolen uh, and taken away. And they also can leave trails of shame and guilt where the individuals who were the victims, they won't tell their family. Uh, they will definitely suffer in silence and some with catastrophic results where it literally does uh, destroy families and lives. It pains me to say this, but she took her life because of this incident. So Steve continued to clock into work every day and pick up the phone where he was paid to rob people of their entire life savings, but secretly saving as many people as he could. But all this time, Steve was being torn apart inside because hundreds of calls were coming in and he knew that he couldn't save everybody. And that really started to take a toll on him because even the world's worst scammer deep down knows what they're doing is wrong. Man, sometimes it feels good to want to just get drunk and just jump off some building, you know. Life is so shit right now. It's a shit job. It's a shit country. And so after a long week of work, Steve sends a message to Devin on WhatsApp saying, I want to get a place raided. Can you help? And Devin says, yep, give me an address. Okay. They'll be able to see the satellite antenna on top of the building. And the best time to raid the place would be 4 o'clock in the morning because at that time there is a half hour slot where both processes are running. So if you get this one, I'll give you two more. Hey everyone, I cover a lot of scams in my videos and one way to protect yourself from being scammed is by strengthening your password. And the tool that I use to generate strong and complex passwords is Dashlane. You know, if you are reusing the same password for everything and a hacker gets one of those passwords, they can do a ton of damage. So let Dashlane protect you and store those passwords with their secure VPN so you never have to worry about forgetting them. 
And if you shop online and you fill out forms, then you need to make your life easier by letting Dashlane store this info and fill in those forms with a one-click experience. So if you're like me and you have a hard time keeping track of your info and you have a lot of scammers trying to mess with your data, then go to dashlane.com slash pleasant green and try it free for 30 days. And then because you love it so much, be sure to use promo code pleasant green to get 10% off Dashlane premium. And be sure to check back next time and see what happens.